Well, hello. I'm starting this just a little bit early. The game itself will begin in three minutes or so. That should give me time to make sure that everything is working. Looks pretty good to me. I also discovered that you can change how the book rotates by using the right analog stick. That's a nice little touch, I guess. Ooh, it's going one way. Now it's going the other way. And I'm gonna just hope that there aren't too many interruptions or other technical hiccups. So, why am I so enthusiastic about this game? Well, I made a video about that. And yes, I'm answering a question that no one asked. There are a lot of things I like, but... I think the biggest one is that sort of fire emblem allure of taking a character that's not much good at anything and developing them into something, something amazing. And I am more than uh, happy to admit that this is sometimes not a great instinct to follow in either Fire Emblem or this game. But you can't tell me how to enjoy this. Well, okay, you can, but I won't listen. And one minute to go. Uh, I... I haven't figured out how to... use certain YouTube functions to set things up further ahead of time. I, I tried it and it uh, didn't seem to work properly. Well, that's my fault for not doing the research, I guess. And it's time. It is time to be a... Well, okay, technically one of the characters is the pirate captain, but... Let's follow their story. I want to see how this works out. Mana I give even odds on whether or not we'll have to fight the rune god at the end. そして古代のモンスターを召喚させ意のままに従わせる術さえもな。いつしか彼らはルーンの騎士と呼ばれるようになったのじゃ。やがてルーンの騎士たちはマナの力に追い立てられるように高みを目指した。剣と知力、魔
Makes it sound like Rune Knights fighting each other used to be an exception rather than the normal thing. And of course, in this game, it's very much the opposite. I have mixed feelings about this game introducing the Brigandine as an actual thing in game rather than just the title. It seems slightly forced to me, but it's not a big enough deal that I'm going to complain too much about it. ルーナジア戦記に国名に綴られ、同時に戦いを通して我らが知り得たある大切な真実も記されることとなった。だがあるルーンの寄進によってルーナジア全土が統一されると、師匠はまるでそれを見届けたように戦火の中に消滅してし
I'm gonna guess this new leader is not that guy. Just, just in case the introduction screen was not clue enough. Not that someone with glasses can't lead a kingdom, mind you. <laughs> oh boy. I'm in for some pain along those lines. Well, we have a stellar introduction already. I guess a sober pirate is barely a pirate at all, though. I don't think the word impulsive is strong enough for this person. <laughs> well, there you have it. That's the trick about Stella. She's very quick to make decisions, by all observations, much too quick, but she still turns out to be right most of the time anyway. これでもらな。昔は人食い well, As much as I like this character building here, I'd like to see some of the others. It is well known that pirate factions don't get along with each other. Oh, just a minor detail. <laughs> well, I, I guess there's a reason for that. And of course this completely crazy plan worked out. That's the sort of person we're dealing with.
昨日は我がカサドラ島からこのミレルバ本島に自我の国を発見しここにいるギニアムハーメットの霊場で荒らせられるカサドラの狩猟もうその話はいいんじゃないかあおいおいステラそれよかさ今日からミレルバ諸島連邦の代表議長はパパのギニアムハーメットが務めることになるんだ昨日お宅の船を襲った連中のことをもっと詳しく話してちょうだいよねっ<笑>亡くなった母さんに似て相変わらずせっかちじゃのうお前はだがまあステラの言う通りじゃわしもな常々感じておったんじゃがわしら海賊の末裔はお互いを認め合って、huh. こうして、so、I guess they don't count themselves as officially pirates anymore despite acting like them in every way I can observe but you know what Um, I'm willing to roll with this. It sounds like an odd nickname, but we'll, we'll take a look at why that is in the character description. マンタのトミー誤解してもらっちゃ困るでよわしらの鉄則が緩むなんてこれっぽっちも思うわけねえさそうだがよ昨日のチンピラの海賊どころかここんとこマナサリンのムールかつってはよ俺ら海賊を下げすんでた国々がどいつもこいつもおかしくなってるだろ確かになグスタファとノーザリオそれにマナサリージアとガイムールもともと仲の悪い連中がここに来てドンパチ追っ始めたって言うじゃねえか今日でああでもってその勢いで大陸制覇に乗り出したってんだからわしら海賊もびっくりしたねパパこのままじゃいずれ奴らはこのミレルバにそれはそうよなこのミレルバ諸島は自我のブリガンダインはもちろん大陸にはね資産がワンシャターある一度海賊の味を占めた連中が見逃すはずは奪われる前に奪ってやるキャプテンハーメットの血を舐めてもらっちゃう。Well, we were just talking about what nonsense it was to conquer the entire land, but わしも賛成じゃそれにしてもステラはミレルバの騎士団長っていうよりはマスマンタのおじきそいつはこの裏若きを止めば下品になっちまったって言いたいのかい That is such a Japanese thing to say おっとこえいこえ時が時ならミレルバ一の女海賊を怒らしちまったかな<笑><笑>よっしゃ、今日でも賛成してくれるんなら話は早いや。All right, so I guess they've just decided to do that absurd thing. Well, it is in character. わしら、ミレルワ諸島連邦は本日をもって、兵を挙げるとしようぜ。えぇ、ー、そんなに簡単に決めちゃっていいんですか何言ってんだよ、プー。海賊は昔から即断即決。そうじゃないと荒波に飲まれちまうってんだよ。And it, it seems absurd, but this is actually a pretty, pretty strong and dangerous trait to have. In any sort of combat or competition, an okay action that you take right away is always better than the perfect action that you enact after everything's happened already. So you could take. このルーナジア全土を制覇し文字通り海賊の王者となるんじゃ依存はねえな They, These guys did not need very much convincing at all though、うん、そんじゃケーキ漬けに久しぶりにあれをやるか王者
ミレルバルーバーミレルバルーバーハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハお前はほんのチビの頃で知らんだろうがこのマーメドギニーはな船のキャプテンなんて似合う男じゃねえ、huh. 好きに泳がす方がかえって役に立つ男なのよああ寝室鬼没あっちこっちの港の女たちも今度はいつ現れるんだろうってうっと娘の前で何やがる<笑><笑> I do kind of wish. I wish that there was there was some ship to ship combat mechanic in this game. E even though, well. This province is the only one where it could possibly matter. And now we got ourselves the map. So, just taking a look around here, it's not looking great. One of the problems with Escalio in the original Brigandine was their position was exceptionally bad. Granted, defensively they only had to guard a couple of castles, but the moment they started pushing outward, things got bad extremely fast. They had to deal with several different kingdoms, and they'd have to. Guard a whole lot of borders, and taking a look at this, I think this situation is worse. Yeah, I, I have no doubt whatsoever that this strategic situation is worse than Escalio. And it takes a Brigandine veteran to know exactly how bad that statement is. But I, I expect I expect things to be a little a little rocky. There's going to I will have to make some tough decisions. In the capital is the strength of this kingdom. They've got some very solid rune knights here. And this one is in particular interesting to me. It works a little differently than the others. It has a self recovery、uh, skill that costs nothing to use, apparently. But using a normal attack takes MP. <laughs> And then it has a beam attack. Okay. I, I guess it's supposed to be. Let me check his stats. This defense is pretty darn strong. It's like, it's like a golem, but except it actually has an intelligence score, and a good one at that. It's very magic resistant. I'm not sure what to make of this. It's gotta have some sort of weakness, but no, I thought, it, no, no. Maybe being a machine, it's bad at leading monsters, but actually, its rune power is really good. Okay. I'm not complaining. We've got sorcerers. Sorcerers are definitely good to have. Let me take a look at. Oh, did not want to do that.
Now this is going to be fairly interesting as I figure out how to use this character best. The obvious thing is to, of course, position this guy with one rank of monsters in front of him and use Geno Flame. But I'm not convinced that this is always going to be the right thing to do. In particular, power has traditionally been used to cause a considerable amount of damage by using it on a monster with a good breath attack or other AoE. I guess it'll take some experimentation to figure out exactly the best way to go here. Also, if you don't know how to use Berserkers, you're not going to do well with this kingdom. They have, I think, three characters go going along the Berserker class at the start, and none of them are low enough level that you can easily take them off of it. The idea I have uh, in my head is Oh, you, where, where else am I going to have ideas? Is bring some unicorns, like at least two with the total army. Ooh, nice. I gotta remember this thing. That's gonna be a big deal. Anyway. And give this guy some room. In fact, have nothing standing directly next to him. Thanks to Zone of Control, it'll protect him from being completely surrounded, but he's probably going to eat some hits. I mean, this guy is built tough, but I will need to have some healing within casting range. Why am I going to do that? Well, because he has AoE attacks. deals moderate damage and massive damage to all units within a one hex radius. Note that it says units, not allies. Very damage efficient if it works. Could change the tide of battle. Could also change the tide of battle if I overestimate how much he can take and he just gets beaten down before he can do the same to the enemy. Well, no one said that the Berserker fighting style was low risk, right? As for the ruler herself... Unfortunately, the, na the skill description does not say how much of a buff this is. I think that's a very important detail. I assume it's strong because ruler skills had better be strong. Hmm. I don't like the idea of decreasing my uh, ruler's agility though. Especially because her starting agility is very good. And it would be nice to have some evasion on someone who, who uh, is key to the army, because if she gets KO'd, you lose the battle. Once again, I'll need to experiment some to figure out exactly how this should go. One thing I... <laughs> have certainly decided on is that I need to move her up and have her be active as much as possible. have not quite decided how much border guarding she should do. She's probably pretty intimidating. We also have a few low-level knights that are inflexible, like this one, and some that can be turned into projects. If you're level 6 or lower, then you can use the multi-class system to its uh, best... I'm sorry. I, 
I'm just so happy that this game is out that I'm kind of at a loss for words. I, I had no idea that we were ever going to get a sequel for this. In fact, I was certain that we wouldn't. This troop lineup is not very good. Neither is this one. <coughs> uh. So I guess the first thing I should do is put together some better armies for these characters. In particular, every, every squad is going to need at least one, preferably two, durable frontline characters. And I know where to get at least some of them. This place. Golems in particular. Funny thing about golems. I don't think I start with any, but I will definitely want some. At a glance, there's nothing especially interesting about golems. They, they don't have any special abilities, they don't have any elements, um, they walk forward and they use their strength and high defense to um, take up space on the front line that the enemy cannot ignore. And that's it. What makes them interesting is how they interact with their environment. For example, uh, take a look at uh, this guy's cost in a squad versus this guy, and also compare their stats. Extremely similar, especially with um, the attack, defense, and agility, and health. Pretty much all of the direct combat stats are almost exactly the same. The difference is that the golem, well... Okay, the giant snake costs almost twice as much as the golem. As frontliners, they are extremely cost efficient, and if you can pair them up against enemies that also have low agility, um, they will outperform on a cost basis. So that makes them sound a little bit overpowered. But, uh, you might have also noticed, they have zero intelligence and cannot increase it by anything other than equipped gear. They have no growth whatsoever. Which means they have no defense whatsoever against magic. Yeah, this is not one of those games where zero intelligence makes you magic immune. Hmm, I think this is overdoing it just a slight amount. Actually, you know what? This guy is using two very expensive units and he needs a little bit more... a bit more or less... I don't know. So, a lot of these need to be tweaked. Using two uh, high-level... You, or not, not even high level, just high power units like this does not work so well, I think. So that's going to take a, a lot of reworking. But going back to that golem thing. So that, that weakness against magic is in itself not as simple as it may seem. Support magic is pretty easy to get. Offensive magic, not so much. Damaging magic especially tends to be rare and expensive when monsters are concerned. There's, of course, demons and angels, but those can't be summoned just anywhere. 
and they take a lot of rune power, so a as we saw before... <sighs> it's really hard to bring those guys and also have the advantage of numbers on your side. You can bring rune knights that can cast spells, but that also comes with a price because rune knights are the keystone of your army and wizards tend to be a little squishy. They also often cast fairly weak but large area of effect spells which are not necessarily the best solution for golems. Well, let's, let's move these guys out. So because offensive magic is not the commonest thing, you can often position golems such that they are on the front line somewhere but aren't under very great threat of being attacked by uh, magic. And that, that makes their deployment quite interesting. It takes some planning because their movement per turn is not very good. You'll have to look at the uh, enemy formation and kind of figure out where everyone is going to be before you actually reach the enemy. Which is a nice mental exercise, I'd say. I definitely want to pick up some lizard men. These guys are great for filling out your ranks. Especially for rune knights that are lower level. Next step is to actually bring those guys up to the, the castle that I have in mind, but I think I can manage that. Well, it's not too surprising that these guys would favor sea serpents, but that's actually a little tricky to deal with because most of the fights are going to take place on land rather than in the water. One of the reasons lizard men is men are so good is that they fight well just about anywhere except mountains. But let's let's move these guys up and we'll see if we can rearrange things to make a little more sense. It's a good thing we have all these decent knights because we're gonna need we're gonna need to cover a lot of ground. I'm not even sure where I'm gonna attack first. Oh, Pluto needs some people as well, but I'm running out of mana reserves. Well, I might as well use them. They're just wasted if I don't do anything with it. Giants, they strike me as very tricky to use. Oh, I didn't explain something else that synergizes with how golems work. Which is, since using them... Whoa! Whoa! That's a mana miracle, isn't it? Welp. That makes things more complicated. makes things a lot more complicated. <laughs> Alright, well, they have good growths in every stat. All the random stuff came out their way, and if I can keep it alive, it's probably going to become very strong. But, blessed or not, it's... well, their agility is not amazing. 
So actually giving them kills is going to be tough, especially because they're also a little bit squishy. Anyway, reason golems are great. Uh, I, I mentioned how they are very cost-effective and allow you to fit more stuff into your squad. This is especially important because of the benefits of surrounding enemies. In particular, if you can put units on opposite sides of an enemy unit, they basically lose all of their evasion ability. Any, any attack, or just about any attack, will have a 100% hit chance. Unless you're facing a very high-level uh, agility-based rune knight, maybe. And this conveniently removes the disadvantage of golems, which is their low agility. Now let me let me rethink where I'm going to move these guys. As I said, I want Ginny and a dude to have access to unicorns. And to to do that, I'll either need to move them to a castle which already has them, like this one, or a place that can summon them. But my mana reserves are a little tight and I'm going to need access to those unicorns as soon as possible because I don't want these guys to be inactive for long. Yeah, so I'll move them up here and I'll deal with the other details next turn, I think. See, and this guy doesn't have to go to port side anymore, I think. This robot, I mean, whatever. So, how am I going to attack? That's the big thing. This actually seems extremely tricky. Especially since I haven't seen the enemy movement yet, but just going off the larger map here. Most of the moves I can make from here expose me to... Um, attacks from more directions, but there are a couple of exceptions. For example, if I attack from port side to Vestilis, I technically have to worry about attacks from more different castles, but that also means the enemy has to sp use more rune knights to guard his borders, which makes attacking easier. Yeah, I don't have to guard more castles, but they do if I uh, take Vestilis, so that seems like a good move to me. Same goes for... well, actually, no. It doesn't quite go the same way for attacking north from Minns. Because I'm dealing with two separate kingdoms here, and they'd have to guard, or guard roughly the same number of borders either way. I'll have to see what happens at the end of the movement phase next turn, because this turn I won't be able to do much attacking at all. Another thing I need to worry about is how to deal with these guys. Oh yeah, this is the second Project Knight. And she's going to be very, very tricky to use. I think she needs the use of stuff like golems more than anyone else. Um, let me see if I can figure up a out a setup for her. I think she'll need she'll need a ghoul or two. Yeah, two ghouls in addition to this stuff and she should be able to um, guard herself sort of well. It's gonna be messy. It's going to be tricky and I expect to fail at least a couple of times. So... 
Um, I cannot summon more ghouls here. Centaurs used to be blatantly overpowered, but the new, relatively new uh, flanking and surrounding system has changed things a little bit. And that since centaurs are backliners, they don't contribute to surrounding the enemy yet, and that's a fairly big deal. Nonetheless, there will probably be squads that have room for centaurs, especially later on. Alright, so that's decided then. I'll move these two up one castle, or yeah, and summon some ghouls for the uh, low level knight at that point. And I don't know if I should send anyone on quests just yet. I'm trying to think of too many things at once. But whether it's a good plan or not, I think I've got a plan. So let's execute it. Oh, and save first, because you always save first. The first Brigandine game was also made so that people do not attack uh, on the first turn. That is, most of the good knights are in the capital or the inner cities, so you have to spend a turn moving your stuff outwards. I also appreciate that you can take a look at the battlefields of... Oops, no, no, no. The battlefields of these places ahead of time. And how they'll look if you're on the attacking side. For example, in this case it looks like there's going to be a narrow pass with mountains on either side. So if possible I should bring units that are good at fighting in mountains. And looky here, I have some golems which are good at mountains, so that should work out. I also have flying units, so yeah, I think I can work with that. Oh wait, that's their stuff. Oops. You see, they're smarter about this than I am. Ugh, I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I definitely have some problem, although I think uh, the Gigas uh, creatures are good at mountains, so I'm not completely lost. I'll still have some summoning and consolidating to do over here. Yes, but no. No invasions are going to happen. Did I leave someone behind here? I think I did. That's not very smart of me. That would be a mistake. <laughs><笑> ロンリ的な説明が嫌いな人間は結構多いんだ。とりあえず了解。国政の島国、ノーザリオ王国、ルビーの賛成王が原因不明の死去後、王子のルビーの四世が王座を引き続き、まとい。well, every kingdom has a scene like this where they sort of discuss their feelings about all the others, which, um, this being a conquest strategy game, you can probably guess what the, all of the conclusions are going to be.
並びにしてまあ相性がいいとは言えん相手ではあるなもっとも我ら国を代表する騎士の中にも一人マフィアが混じっておるがなおっとだなそいつはこのアデューのことですかいマフィアって言ったら聞こえが悪いいや、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、ルビーの4世だとさぞかしお生まれが良さそうな顔してんだろうな。<笑> well, like, he actually does, so that's not a bad assessment. 正解。ルビーの4世は正統派の美男。あの品格は我が国の幹部機関に到底見ることができず。<笑>次、いいから次行け、次。The more I play this, the more I enjoy the writing of it. They're doing a pretty good job with the characterization with scenes like this. It's important to remember with these kingdoms that they are never completely without a particular type of rune knight.、Um, they all have at least a little bit of magic, some、uh, per perhaps lighter range characters, and some heavy hitters. That being said, the characters that are most powerful within a particular faction will shape that somewhat, and those are definitely not the same. デラというのが狩猟らしいけどその娘タリアが舞台を率いているそうだよタリア彼ら長い間大国の都合に振り回されてきたのだ,だから今度は自由を勝ち取ろうと必死なんだそうだ、うん、今こそ自由のブリガンダインで大陸を征服してやるってねはあ自由とな。わしらなんぞは生まれた時から今日まで自由気ままな海賊暮らしじゃからのそういう窮屈な感情は Yeah, I feel like that particular ideology Well, they're not exactly at odds with each other Oh, come on You cannot dispute the song I will not allow that Uh, I'm gonna have to tangle at least a little bit with these guys early on, more likely than not. Or at the very least, I'm gonna have to guard a border against them for a long time. Oh, well, this explains a lot. I was wondering what set these guys apart from everyone else. Well, I guess we should consider ourselves lucky that we haven't.、Uh, that we aren't required to fight tanks or anything. まあとにかくノーザリオやマナサリージアのような伝統国とはだいぶ雰囲気が違う国のようだね。というと続きは海丸にお任せよ。グスタフ一族の力が絶大なため国の内部構造が
視界不良もとい、hmm. よく見えないのです。That... I don't know, that doesn't seem terribly different from a standard royal family to me. ティム・グスタフってやつだろう知ってるのああ、十七八の頃に一時ミレルバ本島の学術院に出入りしていたはずそれは知らなかったのなんせ金には困らねえご身分だ。学術院も金欲しさにほんの。さすが裏事情に詳しいの。ふん。じゃの道はヘビ。Well, the robot said it before I could. <laughs> Wonder where this robot got its sense of morality from. <sighs> From the looks of the map, I'm gonna be tangling with these guys the most. They, well. From a strategic point of view, they seem to be the Ascaris Empire of this game. なぜかロマヌフ法王が表に出てきてないんです。代わりに息子でルーン警察師団長のルドが規制を上げてましてね。他の国と同様に兵を挙げたみたいです。そのルドという男が父親とは違ってかなり危険な人物だという噂も。ああ、いや。We are probably looking at a crusade here. Would you call me a car coward if I said I'm not particularly looking forward to that? Huh. That's not something I've ever heard of, but I guess. This is, this is the faction that I know the least about. Eh, we'll probably find out more as the game progresses. Well, that was a fairly well worded insult. I, I have to give my compliments to the translators for that one. Probably. 
せえってのオッケー海丸礼を言うよこれからはガラクタの寄せ集めなんて言わないでありがとう 100% <laughs> what, a, what a pirate response to that statement. I approve. Such a bother. I now have to actually play the game, and I'm not sure how well equipped I am for that. Well, the first thing I have to do, of course, is figure out how to reinforce over here. I think I can pull it off if these numbers work the way I'm guessing. Let's see how the numbers change if I move some units around strategically. My guess is it applies what would happen if the three most powerful rune knights entered combat. I think it would be bad policy to use two、uh, very low level knights in the same battle. Interestingly enough, one of the kingdoms has a setup that tries to encourage that sort of thing. Through a very powerful passive ability. I noticed that ghouls have a little bit more tanking power than they used to. It was not unusual in、uh, the original Brigandine for them to get killed in. Two or three hits. But I don't think that's as much the case now. Well, okay, a white element rune knight would probably do that, but still. Well, I, I still have to be careful with how I use these because I would like to raise at least one or two、uh, ghouls up to higher ranks because you can get some very good stuff if you manage to get kills for these guys. That being said, this is, this is a rather tall order, and I'll have to be very careful about how I move things around if I'm gonna try that. Yeah, so these guys are mountain movement, and sky movement will also be useful. Man, 60, 60 rune cost, but it's worth it because of that agility and flying. They are also air to air, and a lot of ground units have trouble with airborne stuff, especially rocks. So, in that way, wyverns are particularly made to deal with stuff like angels, demons, rocks,、uh, imps, all that other stuff that might be a little tough to hit normally. Um, as much as I、uh, like the idea of mermaids, I don't think that a rune knight like that can afford to spare、uh, magic pool points for a support character or monster or whatever. Oh! I didn't even notice. So, we, this is a promoted one. Let's see what extra stuff she has. She has frost. This changes a lot. I kind of suspected that something like this would be the case. And Maelstrom, hello. And this is once again all units, so I'm 
Okay, it's going to be very tricky to use something like this. Very, very tricky. I, I don't have time to rack my brains to figure out how exactly I need to position things to make that work out. Also, if, uh, this stuff, it works on an enemy that's in water. Maybe the siren herself does not actually have to be in water. Anyway, she can cast frost, so that's... Uh, a monster that can cast a, attack spells is really, really good. Especially a low a lower cost one like that. Like angels and demons cost a lot. So I have a lot of things to think about here. But first and foremost, let's finish off this all this rearranging so that I can see how the uh, measurement of might works in this game. Granted, the unit composition in some of these squads is mm, iffy, but that's just how things work at the start of the game. I think I'll be able to set up some more solid compositions later. Also, level 8 rock is not bad. That should not be all that difficult to promote. Okay, so it does work the way I thought. The fact that it's um, highlighted in red still it kind of implies to me that an enemy might want to uh, attack in such a situation. Well, I haven't used these guys a whole lot in the demo, but... No time like the present, I guess. Uh, one stat short of a mar mana miracle, but that's okay by me. And... The thing I lost was strength, which, well, not the best thing to lose. It's still, it, it's a lot better for this unit than losing agility, I'll tell you that much. Hmm. There's actually not a whole lot more room here. That may be a little tricky to deal with. There's technically... Enough room to fit this. But it makes this look really weird. He basically doesn't have a front line. I'm not sure how to wrangle this so it makes sense. Yeah, that's not a good setup at all. Alright, well, I've been playing this for an hour already, haven't I? And since I don't seem to have a huge audience for this stream, I'm not going to worry too much. And... Now that I look at it, this, this hunter actually has a pretty good magic pool for her level, I think. <sighs> anyway... Next stream, tomorrow, same time as today, I think, is when I'll pick this game up, start up the stream, and play a battle or two. I apologize for taking all this time to not actually make substantial progress in the game, but there was a lot of stuff in the game introduction. A lot of reading, a lot of preparing, and I think I'm going to do a little bit of unit management off ca camera so it doesn't drag too much when I start up the game tomorrow. I guess I'll see you then. Um, yeah, once again, my apologies. I thought I was would be able to fit in a battle in my first hour of gameplay, but I guess, I guess the strategic part of this game is a little complicated. As someone who's played this game for years, I should probably know better. Later.